Hey y'all, welcome to a new what's for dinner. So my goal for this video is to try and do as much real time talking as possible versus my normal voiceovers. No, I'm not saying that I'm doing away with voiceovers, but it has been taking me forever to edit videos here lately. And I'm just hoping that this will kind of help me time wise. Um, so definitely let me know some feedback if you like this or not, but I'm just gonna try it out for this week. And also my kitchen is under construction this week we're getting some drywall work done and we're also getting um, the walls painted so just look over that of course the show's still got to go on still got to feed my family so anyways I am going to be doing some foil packets tonight it has been so long since I have done this I've never done this particular combination so I'm really excited about how it's going to turn out I think it's going to be amazing so I have some roasted potatoes. I'm thinking that two will be enough for us since the kids really don't eat that much anyways. But I have another one just in case I think that we need more. I have some bacon grease. I figured if I added a little touch of that, that it would complement everything really good. So we'll see. I'm also gonna add a little bit of butter to each packet. We're doing some turkey smoked sausage. Kroger was out of the regular, um, but I don't mind the turkey. I actually really like it, so. Um, for the vegetable, we're going to do some green beans. I'm just going to drain these. I picked up some more aluminum foil, the heavy duty nonstick. But I will, of course, spray these with some nonstick spray as well, just in case. And then for the seasonings, for my packet, I'm going to do some Creole seasoning because I want a kick to mine. But the rest of the family doesn't want that. So they really like this steak and shake seasoning. Like they'll pretty much eat anything if I put this on it. So. That's what I'm going to go with for theirs. And then I got this Cajun Power garlic sauce last summer at a Bass Pro Shop. And it's still good. It's still good to luck next year. But the last time that I made sausage, potatoes, and green beans, I put that on it. And it took it to a whole nother level. So I just know this is going to make these extra good. So for the side dish... Boston's request. He wants me to make this Space Jam mac and cheese. They have not even seen this movie before. I'm a 90s kid, so I have watched this on repeat like a hundred times. Who else loved this movie? I'm gonna have to find it for them. I think they like it too, but yeah, that's gonna be our side dish, and I'm gonna go ahead and get my sausage and potatoes prepped, and I will show you how I assemble these packets. Okay, so I only ended up using two of those potatoes, and look at how many that it made. I did chop these up really small, because I don't think I mentioned, but I am going to throw these out on the gas grill. Josh is out there cleaning it right now, but this way, it will cook super quick. I'm thinking 15 minutes. I'll check it at 15. It might need to go five more, but I'll let you know. Um, okay, so I'm going to assemble my full packet with you guys. So I just laid out a pretty decent piece, and I'm just going to spray it. Okay, and the first thing that I'm going to put down is the bacon grease. Then I'm going to do some potatoes. That should be good. And then I'm going to sprinkle it with the Creole seasoning. Pretty generously and then I'm gonna lay down some of the sausage and then the green beans now I'm gonna add a pat of butter about that much maybe like half a tablespoon and then some of the Cajun garlic sauce and this stuff smells so incredibly good. I need to find some other uses for it besides just this. But okay. It's been a while since I've done this. Hopefully I can fold this up right. Uh, let's see. Okay. I'm just taking the top. So I'm kind of pinching it together. And let's see. I'm just going to roll it and then just turn this inwards that way like nothing will leak out pretty sure that's how I've done it in the past okay. 
works for me. So I just have three more of these to go and then I'm gonna go pop them on the grill. Okay, so I've got my grill a little bit under 400. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and put my packets on. So I've rememberized these. These are the kids. And I gave Josh the biggest one and then there's mine. So it's gonna plop it on there. And I'm just gonna set my timer for 15 minutes and check and see if the potatoes are tender. Okay, so these actually ended up taking 20 minutes. I just took this little utensil and stabbed the potatoes to make sure that they're tender and they are. So I just topped these off with some black pepper. As you can see, it has all that flavor in the bottom that when we stir it up, it will just coat everything. So I'm gonna go ahead and serve this up. After a week full of rain, it was finally nice enough to go out on the deck and eat. We always enjoy when we get to do that, but these full packets were an absolute hit with everyone. We all ended up cleaning our plates. Everything was cooked to perfection and seasoned well, and it just made for a really quick, kid-friendly weeknight dinner. As part of dinner tonight, I'm trying out something new. So this is going to be a barbecue chicken pasta salad. I thought that that sounded super good and just something different. So we will see how it goes. So for the chicken, I'm just using some leftover rotisserie chicken from Walmart. Great time saver. Uh, for my pasta, I'm gonna do probably about a half a box of these elbow noodles. But of course, any pasta will work. For the sauce, it's gonna be a combination of a half a cup of mayo and a half a cup of barbecue sauce. And then of course, some salt and pepper. One of you guys told me about this Sweet Baby Ray's no sugar added barbecue sauce and I have really been liking it. So if you're trying to watch your sugar, highly recommend this one. For the add-ins, I'm gonna do one orange bell pepper. You could totally do some fresh cilantro, but I decided to just go with what I already had on hand. So I'm doing the dried stuff. I'm also going to do probably about a half a can of these black beans and I will of course rinse and drain those and then lastly just some frozen corn and it's still frozen at the moment but by the time it is time to eat it'll be thawed out and all will be well so now all I have to do is boil up my pasta slice my pepper and I'm just gonna throw all of that together just put my pasta salad in the fridge and I'm gonna let that chill for a bit and I'm gonna be serving some jalapeno poppers with it I thought that sounded really good I have only made these once before but I am doing these different so this is literally my second time ever buying fresh jalapenos so it's fairly new to me and if I can give any advice if you are not familiar with these it is to wear some gloves because last time I did not and let's just say I suffered all day my eyes were burning, my face was burning, my fingertips were numb. It was a really bad time, so please wear some gloves. Okay, so I have washed these and I'm just gonna cut these in half lengthwise. And then I'm just gonna grab a spoon and scoop out the insides. And I kinda had, I remember having a time with this last time, but I, don't know, I guess you just gotta be patient. See, I broke this one. Eh, nobody will know. Eh, I guess that top part's fine. Mainly, I've got all the seeds out. So, 
that's what it should look like. I'm just gonna do the rest. Okay, so I've got these all done and washed out. Even though I was wearing gloves, stuff was like flying everywhere. So I'm already feeling the burning, but hopefully it's worth it. I'm sure it will be. Um, okay, so for the filling, I'm not gonna show you um, myself doing it, but I'll show you what I'm putting in it. So I'm gonna do half a block of cream cheese. I'm just gonna heat this up in the microwave since it's still cold. I'm gonna do some sharp cheddar cheese, some salt and pepper, some minced garlic, and in place of green onions, I'm just doing some freeze dried chives and some bacon bits. So I'm just gonna stir all this together in this bowl and I will come back when it's time to stuff these. Okay, so here is what we are working with. I'm just gonna stuff these. Looks good to me, and I'm just gonna place it in my baking dish and repeat. Okay, so here they are straight out of the oven. I think they look pretty darn good. And lastly, I'm just gonna top these with some grated Parmesan cheese. This barbecue chicken pasta salad turned out so yummy and it's perfect on these really hot days. And I absolutely love the contrast of something cold served with something hot. And the jalapeno poppers turned out really great as well. Although I do wish that I use Philadelphia cream cheese. I just feel like it makes a big difference. Um, but these were a lot easier than the bacon wrapped ones that I did last time since it's just the bacon bits in the mixture. So I would totally do that again. And this pasta salad was even better the next day for lunch. Okay, so we're back to voiceovers. I know, I'm a mess. But here I made Mongolian beef, which I actually ended up turning this into more of like a beef and broccoli. I honestly do not know the difference between the two dishes, but if I had a guess, this is probably a little bit more on the sweet side than normal. But I do know that I've made a good handful of beef and broccoli recipes, and this was by far the best and definitely a new family favorite. So here's how I made it. So you'll need a flank steak. I'm holding the package up so you can kind of see about how much I had. I have a little bit over one and a half pounds. Now I'm just going to thinly slice it the best that I can and I was trying to cut this against the grain. I've always heard that would result in the most tender beef which luckily mine still turned out tender so I guess I got lucky but um, I've always thought that meant to cut it in the direction of the grain but apparently it's the opposite direction so I'll keep that in mind for next time. I had no clue until I watched a YouTube video. But anyways, so here I'm going to take a third cup of cornstarch and I'm going to add that to a big Ziploc bag and I'm just going to add in all of my sliced beef and then I'm just going to seal it up and I'm going to give it a really good shake to get every little piece coated. This took like less than a minute and this will make your gravy thick in the end while it's cooking in the crock pot. So now I'm just gonna add three fourths a cup of brown sugar to the bottom of my crock pot, as well as three fourths a cup of some low sodium soy sauce and equal parts water. Now I'm just adding in a couple tablespoons of olive oil and a good spoonful of some minced garlic. And now I'm gonna add in a couple shredded carrots. And I saw this hack on TikTok and it's such a time saver. Just take a potato peeler and just go back and forth with it like you're brushing it and it gets it done in no time versus like doing it with a cheese grater, which is how I used to do it. So I just wanted to throw that clip in there to show you guys if you haven't seen that hack. But I'm just going to go ahead and add that on into my sauce. I'm going to pull out my whisk and I'm just going to combine all that together. And now I can go ahead and dump out my steak. I'm going to make sure that it is fully submerged in the liquid. And then I'm going to pop my lid on and I'm going to cook this on low for four hours. About three and a half hours in is when I decided to add in a half a bag of frozen broccoli. I would have added the whole bag, but my family is not as crazy about broccoli as I am. But I just stirred that on into the liquid, covered it back up, and let it finish for the final 30 minutes. Here it is. As soon as it came out, I served it over a bed of white rice, and this completely exceeded my expectations. I wouldn't change a single thing about this recipe, and the next time I get a craving for beef and broccoli, this will be my go-to. Up next, I made a cheesy chicken fajita bake. This seems to be a pretty popular recipe, but this is my very first time ever making it, and I can totally see why it is so well liked. So let me show you how to do it if you have not made this before. So I took three chicken breasts, and I just sliced them in half to make some thinner pieces, and I just went ahead and 
season them well on both sides and place them in a casserole dish. And I just kept it simple with some garlic and onion powder and some pepper. I normally always add salt to my chicken breast, but everything that's going on top is going to be pretty salty, so I didn't want to overdo it. So to a small mixing bowl, I have a block of cream cheese at room temperature, and I'm adding in a third cup of salsa. This one is my go-to. It's the Great Value Cantina Medium Salsa, and I always run mine through a blender because I just cannot do onions, and that's just my way of being able to enjoy it. And then lastly, I'm just going to add in a package of fajita seasoning mix. Um, the original recipe called for just a half packet, but I don't like using a half packet of anything. So I just threw it all in there and stirred that together really good. And now I'm just going to plop a little on each piece of chicken. And I'm just going to take the back of my spoon and spread that into an even layer. Next, I'm going to add some veggies. So I have a red bell pepper and a green bell pepper that I have sliced up. And I, of course, washed them first. And I'm just going to layer that over the top. You can do onions if you want it to, or really any veggie that you prefer could go well with this. And then lastly, I'm just going to add some, some shredded cheese over the top. I just grabbed the first thing that was open in my fridge, and that just so happened to be some Kobe Jack. And I'm going to pop that in at 375 degrees for 30 minutes. I just left mine as is, but Josh and the kids like chopped theirs up and made a taco out of it. Um, and we all really enjoyed it. I love the flavors going on here, and I cannot wait to make it again. To go along with it, I have some jalapeno free scoops and we're going to be dipping that in this everything in the elote dip from Trader Joe's. I've seen a lot of people talking about this and I really wanted to try it. It has a really smoky flavor to it and a little bit of a kick. Um, it's super creamy and it has like actual pieces of corn in it. It's pretty good but I'm not sure if I'd repurchase it if I'm being honest. Last but certainly not least is this bacon cheeseburger soup. I have been making this for a few years now, but this time I decided to change a few things up. And I'm not even exaggerating when I say that this is now our number one favorite soup and hands down our favorite meal from this whole entire video. So I really hope that you made it this far. In fact, if you did, I would really appreciate it if you left a pumpkin emoji in the comments. That would just let me know. And I'm just trying to see something to see how I can hopefully improve my videos in the future. But yeah, with the cooler months ahead, I promise you that you're going to want to save this recipe. So now onto the recipe. I started by browning up one pound of ground beef and I did season it with garlic and onion powder, salt and pepper. Once it was fully browned, um, I drained off the grease. To that same pot, I threw in about a tablespoon of butter and now I'm adding in a cup of shredded carrots and a cup of diced celery. If you are not a fan of veggies, well, neither is my husband and my kids for the most part, and you honestly can't even taste it. I just like the color that it gives the soup, and I like the nutritional value that it adds to something that is not is not healthy. Um, but yeah, so I'm just going to add in a teaspoon of basil and a teaspoon of parsley, and I'm just going to cook that down until it starts to get tender. I didn't time it basically just until I was done chopping potatoes and I did add in four cups of peeled and diced potatoes and then I threw in that pound of ground beef that was drained. Then I added in three cups of chicken broth and I'm going to turn my heat on high and wait for this to come up to a boil and then I will turn it down to a simmer, pop that lid on and just let that cook until the potatoes are tender. So while that was going, I went ahead and popped in these Mary B's yeast rolls in the oven. And if you have not tried those, they are amazing. Um, so yeah, it took about 15 minutes for the potatoes. Then I turned my heat down to low and added in one and a half cups of heavy cream and one cup of sharp cheddar cheese and one cup of pepper jack cheese. So by the way, I will leave the link to the original recipe in my description box, but I will also write out the changes that I made that I personally think makes it better. So yeah. So here I am just adding my cheeses and then I'm going to season it up with some onion powder. If you like actual onion, you could saute one in with the carrots and the celery. 
Um, then I added in some Laurie's season salt and some of the Tony's Creole seasoning and then lots of black pepper. And that's all I did for the seasonings. Um, I'm just going to stir that until the cheese melts and then I'm going to turn off the heat and add in a big spoonful of sour cream. And then for the last and most important ingredient would be a full pound of some cooked and crumbled bacon. And that is it. Um, I removed this from the stove and put a lid on it. And I just let it sit until the rolls were done. And that was the perfect amount of time for this to thicken up. Um, I just topped it with some shredded cheese and some extra pepper. And just look at how perfect that consistency is. This is super meaty, which is honestly something that I don't normally care for. But it works so well in this. This is basically a really good potato soup with a bacon cheeseburger twist. It's just incredible. But that is going to wrap this up. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Thank you so very much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye guys.